Hi, grown-ups. Welcome to another month of virtual preschool. I wanted to go over your packets today so that you can see what is going to be coming in your October packet for preschool. You'll kind of get an idea of what activities you can do at home with your kiddos um, and ways to make it easier and more difficult. I'm also going to share some of my favorite um, manipulatives and supplies with you in case you wanted to place an order on Amazon. Um, and then I also, just a little housekeeping uh, measure here, we did have a fall break scheduled for one week during October and we were not going to have any videos that week, but I thought, what the heck, we're just going to keep making videos all month long. This is a really fun theme. It's one of my favorites for the month. And so that October break that's in the calendar, if you've looked at the parent resource page, there's a calendar linked there. Um, that is going to, you'll still get videos for fall break. They might be a little bit shorter because I am a mom and my kids are off of school for fall break. So um, those videos might be a little bit shorter during that week, but you're still gonna get the same number of videos and the packet is still the same, the same big packet that you always get. And I'll probably supplement some other videos into um, those fall break emails, okay? So to your packet. I'm gonna show you everything that's in here and ways that you can use it at home. The first thing that you're gonna pull out, it's two pages, it is nocturnal animals. So this is our very first theme. We're gonna be talking all about nocturnal animals and then at the end of the month, we'll do some Halloween activities. Um, nocturnal animals are obviously animals that are more active at nighttime. This is a measuring activity. So you're gonna cut out all of these cards and then allow your kiddos to measure them. We've done a little bit of measuring in our preschool videos, and so we can measure with a measuring tape or a ruler. My very favorite measuring tools for preschool, let me show you, are linking cubes. And so they hook together, they're one inch by one inch by one inch, and they just hook together. And so the kiddos can measure with their cubes and see how long each of these animals are. I will link these linking cubes on my Amazon, um, little link, my Amazon affiliate link for you in case you want to order a set of these to have at home. Um, they're great for measuring. They're also just great like STEM projects and building. They've got the little holes on all sides of the cube and so you can make some really cool creations with it. There's also fun little activities. This is some something I printed off of Pinterest um, just to go with the linking cube. So if you want to get a set of these to work on the measuring this month, you're going to get a lot of play out of them. Okay, so that was our first nocturnal animal measuring activity. The next thing in here is just a letter trace, nocturnal animal letter trace. I would recommend that you put this inside of the page protector and use Expo markers, the dry erase markers with it so that you can practice over and over again. Um, this is gonna coordinate with some of the other activities in your packet. So the next thing is bats. I love all of the bat projects that we're going to be doing. So this is a two-parter as well. This is bats that have all of the capital letters. And then this is a read-write build. Once again, I would put this in a page protector so that you can use it over and over again. So what the kiddos are going to do is choose a bat. I would recommend putting them in a sensory box of some kind or hiding them or even just flipping them upside down on the table so they can't see it right away. They're going to flip it upside down or right side up, I guess, so that they can see it or pull it out of their box. They'll put it here and say the name of the letter. So they'll read the letter, then they'll write the letter. And then down here, they get to build the letter. You can use any sort of manipulatives that you have at home. I would recommend like dry black beans or even little googly eyes or something like that, that they can use to form the letter in the cave down here. So these will go in a sensory box. This will go in a page protector and you can play this over and over again. For older kids, I would give them uh, maybe three or four of these and maybe spell their name or spell a sight word or spell something that they can recognize like mom or dad or something like that. Then they can write it and then they can build it down here. For younger kids, only give them letters that they know. So that might be the first letter of their name and the first letter of their brother's name. It might be just the letters that we've worked on that week in our preschool videos, but don't overwhelm them with too many letters all at once. Um, the other thing that you can do is pull out the bats and then write it down on this, on this orange paper. You can use this as a recording sheet so they can pull these out and then do this as a second activity. So I'm hoping that you can get more than one use out of these materials. Um, the next nocturnal animal activity is all about shapes and shape matching. So this one is going to be the game. You're going to cut out all of the trees and cut out all of the little cards with the owls, and then you'll match the owl onto the tree. That's the same shape. 
This one, again, you can put this in a page protector so you can use it more than once, or you can just have it be a one-time use with crayons and they can color it. But they just are gonna look at the shape of this owl and then color the shape that matches. So it's gonna be a little visual discrimination and shape practice with this. Um, then we're gonna move, oh, and you also get this cute little counting bat book. So they get to count the, the bats that are in each cave and color those bats and practice reading. We did practice, if you did the September videos, we did practice I see as our sight words. And so hopefully they kind of recognize that and then they can keep reading based on the picture. It'll give them some context clues. I see three bats. Um, and so this is just to color and practice reading and just really build their confidence with reading and letters and words. Um, we also have this really cute little spider web project. So you're gonna get a strip of purple paper. On this paper, you're going, you or your child, if they're ready, um, you're gonna write their name across here and then they're gonna cut out each letter so that they're all separated and then you're gonna glue the letters all over this web. The older kids, if they wanna put their name back in order, you can go across one of these long lines on the web and put their name back in order after it's been cut apart and probably a little mixed up on the table. Um, then down here, my name is either you can write it or they can write it. For younger kids, you might write their name here and then allow them to put it onto the web and match the letters. And then you can count how many letters are in their name once they've been glued on. I have blank letters in my name, so you'll put a number here in this spot. So you get a little bit of counting practice, a little bit of name practice. Older kids, let them write the name themselves and just tell them to put a little gap in between the letters so that they can cut it. Older kids, they can write their name. Younger kids, you write it. If you want to make it a little bit more challenging, you can add some letters in here that are not part of their name and they'll have to cut it out and decide, okay, is this letter in my name? Is this letter not in my name? Is she trying to trick me? And decide which ones get glued onto the web. So that is this purple paper and this little spider web. This is a little name activity. Um, we also have fine motor work. This is for cutting and hole punching. So the dotted lines, they're gonna practice cutting. There's a dotted line that goes around the pumpkins. They can practice cutting that. And then you can see there's little circles around the edges of the pumpkin. And that is to be used with um, hole punchers. If you saw the orientation video, this is one of my very favorite fine motor activities is hole punching. You can even let them use the trash that they cut out and just go to town, just hole punch the whole thing. This is gonna strengthen their little hand muscles and really get them ready for writing and pencil grip. So I would really recommend that. Um, I'm only including the half sheet of this activity, but I will put this on the parent resource page if you want to cut more. I've seen some kids that make a whole bunch of them and you string them all together like a big banner to decorate your mantle. So if the kids wanna make something really fun and cute with it, that's a great idea. And you can find this on the parent resource page and print out more at home. Um, if you need a pair of these hole punchers, I have these linked on my Amazon page. And I think they're under $5 on Amazon. So go ahead and head to the link and you can order yourself a pair of these. They make some that are real fancy and have like silicone handles and all of that. I don't care about that. These are the kind that we use at preschool in my classes. They're a little bit stiff, but they really give them a good hand workout. So I recommend these. You can print more of these. This is a fine motor activity for preschool. Um, next is gonna be our activities for Halloween at the end of the month. This is a letter sorting activity. So I would recommend that you keep um, track of your bats and you can use your bats for this sorting activity. Um, so you're gonna be looking at the lines in the letters. So does it have straight lines like the letter T or the letter I? That'll go here. Does it have curvy lines like a letter S or a letter C? Those ones will go over here. If it has both, like a letter B or a letter J, those ones are gonna go over here in the middle. So they're gonna be sorting the letters. Once again, if you've got really little kids, don't overwhelm them with the full alphabet. Just give them a couple of letters. Maybe the next time give them a couple more, but have them really analyzing the letters. Does it have straight lines? Does it have curvy lines? We really wanna be using that visual discrimination to um, do this sorting activity. So this is really gonna help them if you can name the letters while they play, that's gonna give them even more practice identifying the letters. The next one is a Halloween clap and build. This is um, for syllables. So once again, I will be using the linking cubes 
on this activity when we play it in my in-person classes. Um, these are so great, seriously. You're gonna use them for everything if you end up with a set at home. You can also use just regular Legos for this activity. You can, honestly, anything that you can stack, you can, you can do with, with this activity. So there's a whole bunch of different Halloween words. You're just gonna clap the words and then make a little stack on top of it that's that many. So ghost is just one syllable, so you'll just put one here. Frankenstein, that one's three. You'll have a little stack of three on top of this one. It's just a super simple little clap and build to cover up everything with different size towers. So I, I like these because they actually hook together. So if you knock a tower over, it stays intact. The kiddos can get kind of frustrated if it tips over and they're in tower and it's like a domino effect. So all the rest of them get tipped over. Um, but these hook together. Legos would do the same thing. So if you have Legos at home, this is that's a great tool to use for this activity. So this is a syllable, counting counting syllables. The next one is going to be one of my favorites, trick-or-treating. Um, so these number cards, you're gonna cut out and then I hide them all over the room or all over the house. I hide them everywhere. And the kids have to go around the room and try to find all of the numbers and write them down. So this page, I would recommend you put into a page protector when you do this activity so that they can use an Expo marker and you'll get more than one play out of it. Um, but they just go around and they can either do it in counting order and write the numbers in order or they can just write them down as they find them. Um, once again, younger kids, don't give them all of the, all of the candy numbers. I would maybe go with one through five or one through six. Older kids can do the full, um, one through 12 or one through 10. Um, on here, I think this page only has 10, um, spaces to write the numbers. So when you're doing the writing, you might only be able to get to number 10 or they just write down the first 10 that they find. Um, the other thing that you can do with these counting cards is to make groups. And so you can lay them out, make a number line with counting order, um, and then say, okay, let's put one car next to this one. Let's put two cars next to this one. Let's put three LOL dolls. Whatever you have at home that you can make groups of, you can lay out a number line and make groups. So you can show the succession of one is just one item, two is going to have more, three is going to have more. I also like to pull these out. I'm kind of mean, so I make my kids do math when they go trick-or-treating. So after my kids have all their candy and you know we're two days into devouring candy at our house, I'll pull this out and say, okay, let's make a number line with all of your candy. And we'll put one candy bar here and we'll put two candy bars here. And oh, look, you have three suckers. We'll put those here. And we can make a number line that shows their candy and they can kind of sort their stuff. Um, into groups. So you can do it with toys, you can do it with candy, you can do it with literally anything, but I would use these um, for the little write the room, the hunt and find, and also just as counting practice with supplies that you have at home. Um, the other thing that we have in here, I am sending a page protector in every packet so that you'll have one at home. If you need more, um, they're a little bit flimsy, and so if they're getting a lot of use, they might tear and rip and the seams come apart. If you need another pack, they're really cheap. I have them linked on my Amazon, so you can just go on Amazon and buy everything you need. Um, the other thing is our guided activities. So just hang on to these. We're going to work on these on the videos. So there's a little pumpkin craft that we're going to be doing that has some of the orange paper here. And the other one is a little Halloween pattern page. If I can turn it. Um, a little Halloween pattern page back there. And then on some of the videos, I'll be using some of the materials that were in your packet as well. And it'll be optional. If they have it available and they can pull it out and do the activity along with me, that's wonderful. If not, they can just watch the activity and they can do it themselves at home later. Um, so that will be happening. I wanted, I didn't want to put too many things in the guided activity packet because I want you to be able to use them as much as possible with your kiddos and really give them a chance to, um, to practice and to learn all of these, all of these skills. So it's gonna be, if you need any tips about making things more difficult for your older kids or making things a little bit more simple for your younger kids, you can shoot me an email. I am happy to answer any questions that you might have about um, our activities so that it works for your family. Um, the other really cool thing that we have available to us this month if you remember back to elementary school, how exciting it was when you'd get those little Scholastic um, book order, newspaper looking things, Scholastic has decided to start shipping to people's homes. And so you can order Scholastic books on our website and they will ship right to your house. Scholastic is their own publishing house and so they can give us really, really, really good prices on um, their books that they publish, which is tons of books, right? Like everything comes from Scholastic. So I am going to be making um, a list for our virtual preschool class that has books that I'm gonna be reading, 
during our virtual videos this month and then other books that relate to our theme. So books about nocturnal animals, books about Halloween. I know at my house, I like to have a collection of holiday books that we can pull out at every holiday and it just kind of rotates the books that are available to my kids. Um, so some of the books that we're going to be reading this month, this one is super cute. It's called There's a Monster in Your Book and it's kind of an interactive one like, oh no, don't turn the page. Ah, you turned the page. What happened? So this one's really, really cute. I highly recommend it. Um, Spookly the Square Pumpkin. This one I think even has a Netflix special if you've seen this around Halloween time. The book is so cute. We're going to be using this um, at Halloween time to talk about shapes and sequencing the story and that kind of thing. So if you want your own copy, I think it's only like $3.50 on the Scholastic website. Um, the other one is Room on the Broom. No joke, this is probably my all-time favorite children's book. It is just the best. Everything about it is amazing. I am actually using this. My in-person classes, we order from Scholastic too, and we have a class book every month. And so everyone orders the same class book so we can read it together. And this is it for October. And I am so excited. Room on the Broom, my absolute fave. Um, and then the other one that I, I brought out was Stella Luna. So this one's about nocturnal animals. It's about a little bat. Um, so these are some examples of the books that we're going to be reading this month for our themes, and they are available on the Scholastic website, so you can place a Scholastic order there, and if you have, I think it's $25 ships for free, um, anything under that, it's like five or six bucks for shipping. Um, and then you also, if you order this month, you get a free book. It's like a baby shark, free baby shark book with every order. And so even if you just wanted to order the world's greatest children's book, um, you'll get that extra bonus book with your order. Um, so that is going to be linked in every email until October 7th. So the 7th is the deadline for this scholastic order. Um, so all the orders that are placed before then will go through the same day and then they'll ship to your house as long as you have selected that option at the checkout. If you live nearby and you want to place an order and have it shipped to my classroom, which is in Chandler, Arizona, um, shoot me an email first just to make sure that we'll be able to coordinate our schedules, but it ships for free to my classroom. And so if you wanted to do that, we can arrange pickup here as well. And you can get your books here if you make the drive to Chandler. Um, so let me know if you have any other questions about our packet or about our themes or about anything else that we've got going on. Um, take a look at the Amazon links. I'm going to link some really cute little games. Oh, I almost forgot to show you. My favorite game is about owls. I play this with my preschoolers. I play this with my own kids at my house. This is on Amazon too. It is called, I store all of my board games in bags. We're like a big board game family. And so the box has gotten away. Um, it's called Hoot Owl Hoot. It is a cooperative game. If you have not played cooperative games with your kids, get on it. It is so fun. Nobody wins and nobody loses unless everybody wins. So you're working together like a teamwork game. So there's these cute little owls that are going around and around and around trying to get back to their nest before the sun comes up. And so you draw a card and it's either a color card and you can advance to the next color or it's a sun card and the sun gets closer and closer and closer to coming up. So this I thought was so cute to go with our nocturnal animal theme and it's cooperative. I love that. My kids can play this and it's not like competition and they're arguing and accusing each other of cheating. They all want to win together. So cooperative games are my fave. This is from Peaceable Kingdom. They make a ton of cooperative games, um, but I will link this one since it goes along with our theme. I'll link this one on Amazon so that you can take a look at it. Um, I'm so excited for this month of virtual preschool. I am available by email all the time. If you have any questions or concerns for me, Shanda at preschoolonthefarm.com. Last thing, we are retiring our flip grid. I've been having a lot of problems with it. A lot of families are having problems with it. I think that we have added the maximum allotment of people and they locked me out of Flipgrid. So we're just, I've been back and forth with their customer service and we cannot get it to work. So I'm hoping that we can find another solution for show and tell because I really do love seeing your little kiddos and their videos. But until then, goodbye Flipgrid. Um, let me know if you have any questions this month. I hope you love your preschool videos in October. See you soon.